Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's TPM5 here, back again with another NBA video. In today's video I'll be previewing the Dallas Mavericks offseason, a look at some possible trade rumours, some draftees, some players they might look to draft in the draft, and then also the seller cap situation for the future. So basically all things Mavs for the next 5 minutes. Without further ado, let's get started. The Mavs went 8-12 and 12 throughout their first 20 games. And they were at a 500 record for the majority of the year, but late in the season they pulled away to have a 42 and 30 record, and lost in the first round to the LA Clippers. This off season we learnt further than before. We learnt that Luca is a guy that can carry a team and also, you know, put stats up in the playoffs, and that he probably needs a bit more help. So we're gonna, you know, obviously there's been some rumors surrounding Paul Zingas, so we're gonna look at that later on. But I think that it will be interesting to see how the team responds to the mutual, you know, de, you know, departure of, um, you know, Rick Carlisle. He's been there for a very long time, and not to say Luca's a diva, but there's something going on. Like if you're Rick Carlisle, you want to coach one of the better players in the league. So it'll be interesting to see how Jason Kidd does. But just a quick break, guys. I make NBA content two to three times a week, but I've been doing these previews very often, like daily. So the next one will be about the Atlanta Hawks, so please subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And I'd appreciate it a lot if you guys did that. But let's continue. So with the salary cap table on the screen, I'm going to have it on for another 20 seconds. So this offseason, the contracts of Tim Hardaway Jr., Nicolo Melli, Boban Marjanovic, and also JJ Reddick come off the books. I think the most important thing for them will be bringing back um, Tim Hardaway Jr. As in the playoffs, he proved that he can make big shots when you know when it matters the most, as cliche as that may sound. Porzingis is with the team until 2024 on a deal that incrementally increases about two and a half million each season. I think that he's someone they should explore to trade because his fit with the team just hasn't worked. I think that he wants a bigger role, similar to what he had in New York. But I think that the way the Mavs were using him, at least under Rick Carlisle, wasn't really his you know main skill set. But to be fair, he, it's just it's just a difficult one with him. You know, for how tall he is, you expect him to be more dominant on the inside. But again, if we have any Mavs fans watching, you know, feel free to comment. You know, tell me what you think about him. I think that it is worth exploring a trade for him because he doesn't exactly fit, and he's not exactly thrilled to be there, uh, according to some reports that I've been looking at. But that's that. I think that Josh Richardson on his 11.6 million dollar player option could be good value if he opts back in, and it will be, you know, a key trade piece if he does opt in. It's an expiring 11.6 if he does end up opting in for next season, and then they have not much money committed in the near future as in 2023 they'll only have 63 million committed to the cap but take that with a grain of salt because Luca, after next season so you know the 2021-22 season will be taking his max extension but overall i think this you know this mavs team's in a position where they can make the playoffs again and besides internal growth you know from Luca, i don't think you know without making changes that they can do much more they've kind of had a similar roster for the last two seasons and you know, I think this year they performed pretty well, but you know, you probably need to bring some guys in now. Whether that's Demar Derozan in a in free agency, uh, whether that's trading Paul Zingas for some some players, which we'll talk about later, I'm not sure. But let's get into some trade rumors now, and also some targets in free agency. So Patty Mills is an interesting one. Now his the Mavericks, sorry, were exposed for their kind of lack of depth. And I think that you know, they are in need of that third star, you know, a third all star level guy, but that could be hard to come by. And I think that Patty Mills has been, you know, through a lot of playoffs, you know, has a lot of playoffs experience. He can shoot the ball, he can kind of create for himself. So that would make him an interesting target. But now I'm going to look at some Kristaps Porzingis trades and just talk about what the market could be for him. Now, he has a relatively poor deal, but there are poor deals around the league that can't be traded for. Now, an interesting one would be Gordon Hayward. So it's a small forward that can create for himself, can shoot the ball at a you know, relatively good level. Uh, he, he's on a fairly long-term deal as well. So I think that if you want to change the dynamic, so turn it into a kind of shooting guard small forward combo, or you know, Luka can play point guard, but you know, turn it into a bit of a small combination than having Porzingis barely do what he's expected to do. That could be something they explore for Gordon Hayward. You get CJ McCollum from Portland who might be looking to shake things up amid Damian uh, Lillard trade rumors. Now, I think that's another interesting one or it might change the fit. I think in Portland, their backcourt defensively isn't good enough to go any further than what they've done in the past. I think that Campbell Walker could be an interesting um, player to trade for. Obviously, he's an OKC now. Now, his trade value is not too great, so they could get him for cheap and possibly take some stuff back with them in a trade. 
So the market for Porzingis isn't what you know it would be if he was on a cheaper deal, but I think that a trade is possible, and there are guys that can create for themselves on the market, whether that be Gordon Hayward, whether that be Kemba Walker, CJ, or even Andrew Wiggins. Now, it comes to, down to what the Mavericks you know, will end up doing, and if they do make a trade. If we have any Mavs fans watching, please tell me what you guys are, you know, what you feel, you know, how, what your feelings are about Porzingis, and what you guys feel a fair trade would be. Now, the Mavs aren't expected to do much in the draft, but if they were to do something, I think Charles Bassey, the 6'11 center, could be a good fit. He averaged 18 points and 12 rebounds and 3 blocks per game in his time at Western Kentucky and could be an interesting sleeper project for them. But that brings me to the end of the video, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.